We're now going to head back out to our Sharice Gibson. Sharice, most of the area was without power in the days after the storm due to that catastrophic energy failure. And I know there in St. John where you are, the majority of people didn't have power back until about three weeks after Ida, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Devin, in total, uh, more than 1 million people lost power after the storm. And let me tell you, Intergy wants to prevent that now. They want to spend $15 billion in order to strengthen its grid. Eyewitness investigator David Hammer, he has been following those grid failures in the immediate aftermath of the storm or during the storm and joins us now with where we go from here. As soon as Hurricane Ida's winds died down, we were the first to find this major energy transmission tower crumpled in a rusty heap in Avondale. City tower Council President Helena Moreno arrived soon after. Fallen. Energy Louisiana CEO Philip May told us the tower had just passed inspection. It's a one of the most robustly engineered towers or structures on the energy system. May said it did not need to be upgraded, but now it has been replaced by this. There is no comparison between what we're seeing here, David, to what you and I saw, but that didn't look super resistant when you compare it to this. Right. Not right. at all. Entergy Vice President Sean Meredith said the new Avondale Tower, tied to another new one across the river in Harahan, went online last week. They're the strongest on the Entergy system. They cost $48 million to build, and Entergy claims they can resist 175 mile an hour winds. And a lot of this infrastructure was put in in the 60s, 70s, and 80s when multiple Category 4 storms coming through an area was just not something that we consider feasible at the time, obviously. Was it, was it now back-to-back -back seasons? We've had to evolve our standards, strengthen them, to withstand those type of events. The collapsed tower was just one of eight transmission lines bringing power in from the regional grid that failed in Hurricane Ida. Most of those high voltage lines were restored in a few days, but then the internal distribution system of street poles and transformers took a week or more to fix. Meredith says a major resilience project over the next decade could cut those outage times in half. And we modeled this through a thousand different scenarios and um, very, you know, very confident in our ability to show a significant improvement in that, and that's a huge benefit to our customers and our communities. Entergy wants to spend $15 billion on a region-wide resilience upgrade. It's applying for a share of $13 billion in federal power grid grants, hoping to offset some of the costs. But it's unclear how much federal money Entergy will get, and much of the remaining cost will be passed on to Entergy's customers. We're doing our best to get the shareholders to eat a significant portion of that. Now, of course, as most of it is born on ratepayers. Public Service Commissioner Lambert Boissier is elected to regulate Entergy Louisiana outside the city of New Orleans, including the area where the tower collapsed. He and the rest of the Public Service Commission are still waiting for Entergy to submit its resilience project for approval. Our job is to get us the most reliable power at the cheapest rate, and that is our test for everything that we do. Boissier is up for re-election this fall. He's promising voters who are also seeing much higher power bills that he'll make sure Entergy's upgrades will be worth the cost.